So, hi, I'm Gorang from Singapore. Uh, first of all, tell me how, how many of you guys use LinkedIn? Almost all of you. Okay. How many of you like LinkedIn? Very few, almost 20%. Cool. So, we are here to solve that problem. Uh, we are not we are building the decentralized LinkedIn on the blockchain but before I get into, into indoors uh, let me tell you more about our company uh, what we have been doing for the past two years and how we arrived at this point so today my agenda is going to be I'll tell you about the team the background of the project the ideation solution and get then get into the mechanics of the solution so my company uh, that I started one and a half year ago in Singapore is called Atorus. At Atorus, we are doing smart contracts as a service. Uh, you know, or most of you might know about SaaS companies, software as a service. We gave it a little spin and started a new company, new, new kind of concept called smart contracts as a service. We were one of the first few companies in Singapore uh, doing, working on the Ethereum blockchain along with Digix and Autonomous. Uh, I am also the co-organizer of the Ethereum Singapore meetup. So if any of you guys are in Singapore, just let me know. I can help you arrange a meetup. Okay. So I started this company back in 2016 along with David Moskowitz, uh, who is the CEO of Atorus and Endors. Uh, so David sold his Bitcoin company back in 2015. It was called Coin Republic. It was one of the first exits in Bitcoin in Southeast Asia and Singapore. Uh, when he sold his company, uh, then we met at one of the first Ethereum meetups in Singapore. Uh, you know, we, we, we became friends uh, really early. Uh, we gelled well together. And then I said to David, hey, David, let's start a company. Because Ethereum was just coming along at that time. I had started writing smart contracts. And what I found out was it was really difficult to write smart contracts. Surprise. Because with Ethereum and with smart contracts, as you all know, it's not just about writing solidity code. It's about setting up the nodes, knowing what you're doing, and solving for a lot of vulnerabilities. And hence, it was quite difficult. And I'm ashamed to say that it took me two months to write, to, to learn how to write smart contracts. And I'm very ashamed of that. But yeah. So uh, we started at Taurus. Uh, we have been doing that for one and a half years now. Uh, we also have a pilot with the Singaporean University. So what we work on is converting data and documents into smart contracts on the blockchain. So I was one of the first few persons in the world to put my prenup on the blockchain. I got married last December. <laughs> Are you still married? Uh, yeah, I just got married. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for, for indoors, we have a great team of advisors consisting of people from Etherscan, Digix, uh, BitGo, uh, and also Loy Lu, who is working on Smart Pool and also the Kyber Network now. Uh, we also have Eddie as the advisor, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, we have a pilot with one of the Singaporean universities. Can you go back on slide? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we also have one more advisor that I met yesterday, Patrick McCory uh, from UCL. I didn't add his photo here uh, because yeah, we, he just agreed yesterday. So yeah, we have a pilot with a Singaporean university. Uh, they are going to be the first ones, one of the first universities in the world to issue diplomas on the Ethereum blockchain. Only MIT from US is doing that, but they are issuing their diplomas on the Bitcoin blockchain. So we are helping Neon Polytechnic issue diplomas on Ethereum. So actually the idea for indoors, it all started with this pilot. So when we were doing this pilot with them, one of the selling points for Neon was that the students, they could directly put the diplomas on LinkedIn directly at the click of a button because LinkedIn had an API and you could do that like two or three months ago. Uh, but then LinkedIn just went ahead and changed the API. And now students can't actually put the certificates on blockchain at the click of a button. They have to copy paste all those things and then do it. And it's a big hassle. Uh, and that was actually a setback for us. Uh, you know, then we, then we started thinking about it. When you give your data to all these social networks, Facebook, be it LinkedIn or any other social network, you lose control over your data. The data is owned by all these networks. They can do whatever they want with the data. 
uh, you know, Facebook had this thing uh, two years ago, I think one or two years ago, when they were manipulating the user data. And you know, they, they can do pretty much anything with it. Also, when you post your data on these social networks, when you add anything, any content to the social network, what you're doing is you're making this network valuable. According to Metcalfe's law, the value of any social network is directly proportional to the square of the number of users. That means the more users they have, the more valuable they get. And as a user, you don't get anything out of it. So we want to solve this problem. It's, it's not only about ownership of your data, not only about the economics, but also autonomy over your own data. And see, again, you're trusting a so central party, central, central database to control your data and you know, create your profiles and all those things. And the market is really huge, as you all very well know. LinkedIn was sold for 26 billion to Microsoft. Snapchat did an ICO, uh, sorry, IPO. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Snapchat did an IPO yes. <laughs> at 24 billion valuation, and they were making losses at that time. They didn't even make any profits. And hence, we are building indoors. It is an attempt to give back the ownership of your data to yourself. It is an attempt for you to earn from your data, earn rewards from your data. And even more than that, it's about giving validity to any credential on your profile. So now I'm on LinkedIn. Random people keep adding me. Uh, I don't know that person. That person doesn't know me, I, I think so. But he starts endorsing me for all these skills. He starts endorsing me for HTML, for CSS. I don't know why. <laughs> so uh, frankly, I think these endorsements on LinkedIn don't really make much sense. And that's one of the big problems in the HR and recruitment industries. Big companies like Microsoft, they spend fortunes and they spend a lot of time on verifying the background of all the people, all the new recruits or all the new employees that they're taking in. So some companies even have centers in India where they have more than 240, 250 people who are just doing this for weeks and weeks over end. We, we are trying to solve that problem by creating your credentials on the blockchain. So with Atorus, we have already started doing that. So we, we, we are putting certificates on the blockchain. But then we thought, okay, let's think beyond just certificates. Let's go bigger. And now, with Endorse, you can put anything on your profile and get it validated from a peers on the platform, from the people on the platform. So let me take you through a story of Alice and Bob. So when I was a student, these guys were a pain in my dash dash, but <laughs> yeah. So Alice is a new user on this platform. What she does is she comes here and makes a claim. So she says that I have an MBA from NUS. So NUS is another university from Singapore, National University of Singapore. When she makes this claim, it goes out for endorsements on the platform. The platform chooses endorsers at random and sends out these uh, endorsement request to them. Along with this claim, Alice also has to put up a proof element. Maybe she can put up her blockchain degree or a link to her certificate or a link to the website of NUS where we have her photo. These, the, the way the endorsers are chosen, are there are three really important steps here. One is the endorsements need to be anonymous. So now, uh, imagine you get a request for endorsements. 10 people are voting on it, suppose. The 10th guy who is voting on it, if you can see what are the previous votes and he can tally those votes, then it might influence his decision. Because if he is voting yes, and he sees that all the previous votes have been no, then he'll think that, hey, my vote is not useful at all, so I might not even vote. Or I, I might as well vote yes, because people think it is yes. So to avoid this, to avoid the gaming of the system, we, the endorsements need to be anonymous. Also, the endorsers should be chosen at random. Now this is actually counterintuitive because you think that only people who know you can endorse you or can endorse you. But I don't think so, we don't think so. Your, your claim has to be objective enough that random people on this earth should be able to endorse you. So if I say that I can write smart contracts, 
I can put a link to my GitHub profile to the code on my GitHub links and I you know I can put it with my claim. You guys can go on my GitHub, check my code and see that hey, Gauran can actually write smart contracts. Same thing if I say that I can play guitar, I can put a video of me playing a guitar and you know put that with the claim. So it should be objective enough for you guys to be able to endorse. And we are also using zero knowledge proofs for doing this. So it's actually uh, based on the research done by one of the researchers, Patrick McCory from UCL. Uh, he has written an open vote network in which uh, he is using uh, Schnorr signatures and also one of two interactive, non-interactive zero knowledge proofs for this. Uh, now this is Bob. Bob was selected as one of the endorsers. He got an endorsement request. Uh, Bob looks at Alice's claim. Uh, he also looks at her proof element. And then he decides whether the proof claim is valid or not. So he can either, either vote yes or no on this claim. It's a binary option right now. We can you know, uh, extrapolate that later, but right now it's only binary. Uh, similarly, other endorsers on the platform start voting or endorsing or you know, uh, flagging this claim essentially. So suppose out of three people, two of them say yes and one of them say no. That means that a consensus has been reached here. So I'm working on an algorithm which is similar to proof of stake uh, in its uh, gist actually. So we need a consensus of at least 70 to 80 percent of the people to say yes uh, in order for this claim to be verified. Uh, also what you do is when you're claiming or when you're endorsing you need to stake your reputation on this. So we also have an internal token called SCR, which is a reputation token. So I'm, when Alice is making the claim, she uh, deposits her reputation token in this. And similarly, when other people are endorsing, they also deposit their reputation tokens. And that's because people shouldn't be able to maliciously go and endorse people. So on LinkedIn, sometimes I'm bored. I just sit there and I keep saying yes, yes, yes to all the endorsements. I don't want that to happen on endorse. So uh, suppose this guy, the third guy who says no, uh, it's safe to assume that he's acting in a malicious manner and hence he will be penalized. So he'll lose his reputation. And the other guys who have actually endorsed in a really honest way will actually get, their, get back the deposit of the reputation token and will earn more reputation. So this is explained in the slide and along with the reputation, uh, the claimants and the endorsers, they will also get some rewards. So these reward points are then convertible into actual IND tokens. So IND tokens, uh, not ID, sorry, IND. IND tokens are the tokens which will be issued during the token sale of endorse. So what happens is when you do a claim and when you do make endorsements and you act in an honest manner, you earn more reputation and you earn more rewards. And these rewards can actually be converted into cryptocurrencies and hence dollars at the end of the day. I'll skip this. Yeah. So we are going to be integrating with several other projects. I see indoors as a platform play, as a protocol layer service. So it, it's not just decentralized LinkedIn. That's one of the first applications we are building using this. But it is an entire reputation system. It's an entire platform along which we can have many verticals. Uh, so we are going to be integrating with Uport, uh, with Status uh, for in-platform messaging, uh, also with Digix Spectrum. Uh, so we are good friends with Digix and the spect uh, Status guys as well. Uh, I'm going to be using Ethereum blockchain, obviously, and also IPFS for storing the content and the data. So Ethereum is mainly used to make it more transparent. The tokens will be transparent. Now just imagine uh, if you go on Etherscan and you put your Ethereum address, you might be able to see your reputation tokens. And that's really powerful. It can be used in multiple use cases. It can be used for KYC. It can be used in prediction markets. It can be used in hiring as well. Uh, also, one of the main revenue sources for this platform is going to be advertising and recruitment agencies. This revenue will be given back to the users. We don't want to be a monolithic company who keeps all the revenues. So we'll take a small percentage for operational and administrative issues and most of the revenue will go back to the users. 
and obviously they won't get it all at once, but it will be a vesting period and all those things. You can find that information in the white paper. Please join us and be awesome. Thank you.